there's always stuff going on behind the scenes on a YouTube channel and with Crisis, I actually knew that the remaster of 2 and 3 were coming to the Switch a long, 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 long time ago. But obviously due to embargo, we weren't allowed to say anything. Now after the release of the first one successfully on Switch, I messaged the developer and said, look, we would really love to do something for the game when it launches, but honestly what people are going to want to know about is performance. Are you willing to let us loose on the performance and every aspect of the visuals and would you like to work with us on something like that? Now I was fully expecting them to say, maybe not, but the answer was literally a very confident, absolutely yes, you can do your performance review, just be sure to mention that the whole trilogy is coming out. So that's exactly what we're going to do. There will be two videos, there'll be one focusing on Crisis 2 and one focusing on Crisis 3 and then our full review will come a bit later. So we're going to look at the visual quality on Switch, we'll look at performance both in docked and handheld, we'll also consider some of the lighting effects that have been added for the Switch version, any control changes and just how it holds up in general. How does the Crisis Remastered Trilogy hold up on Switch? Well, oh, I'm a little bit excited, let's find out. First up, it's worth noting that the Trilogy can be purchased for £44.99 or your regional equivalent, that being €49 Euros or $49.99. The games can be bought individually, but if you've not picked them up, then the pack is probably the way to go. Even while I've been chatting away, you've probably picked up on the visual quality. Now, the games on Switch in docked are running at 900p, and the target is 30fps, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. There is some dynamic resolution scaling at work here, but it tends to hold a very good resolution for most of the time when you're playing in docked. In handheld you're looking at up to native so up to 720p and again the smaller size screen and if you've got the OLED it really does look good. Crytek have worked to refine the CryEngine with the release of the first game on Switch and it feels like they've really bought across their experience to these two games. Crisis 2 is running at 30 FPS absolutely locked out, but that's only really half of the picture. This also applies to when you're playing in handheld mode, and there seems to still be some overhead because you can screen capture in both docked and handheld. 30 frames per second is maintained when indoors, but more importantly when in those large open areas. When destructible scenery is exploding or enemies are shooting, it still manages to hold on to that 30 FPS. What's really good to see is the focus on performance from Crytek. This is most notable in the frame pacing, that is the rate at which the frames are delivered to the screen, it feels very consistent and as such much smoother. It's very important for a first person shooter but also for one that uses gyroscopic aiming. As far as the controls go, well they have implemented gyro by default. It's a very subtle implementation. You won't find your camera veering all over the place as you move around and this can be adjusted to your tastes. You can adjust the X, Y sensitivities but mainly you can change the Y if you would like to invert that. The World of Crisis 2 was a big step up in terms of visual quality from the first game and there are a lot of lighting effects and details which have been added for this remaster. What I wanted to know though is how have those translated across onto this Switch version? Well other than gyro and a nice little impact implementation of HD rumble, dynamic lights have made the transition nicely. These lights will also cast a shadow from the player. One of the things that made it a special first person shooter is that you could look down and see your own body. There was something quite jarring back in the day when you went to play another game and you looked down there was just nothing, you were just a floating apparition. But Crisis always grounded itself in that air quotes realism and the dynamic lights cast lovely shadows around the world but also with scenery. You'll see sun shadows cast on the floor some reflective surfaces have remained intact, but the lighting quality on the whole is very impressive. Crisis 2 also includes shallow depth of field. This means when you're looking at your gun or modifying something up close to the camera, the rest of the view will blur out slightly, giving it a cinematic quality. And texture resolution also seems to have carried across just fine. Now obviously they have had to reduce the level of detail draw distance to maintain that smooth performance, but it's still decent. Foliage can be seen from a good distance, and it's also dynamic meaning it will move as you pass through it. Textures on your weapons, on the floor and environment in general are very strong. Now while 900p isn't native, it's very close to native and when it's at that max, I think it's fair to say we may have a new contender for the best looking Switch game. I was running around in this world just waiting for those performance issues. I was waiting for the chug and fully expecting the wheels to come off, but they didn't. Even with the largest cutscenes and huge dynamic changes to the environment, that performance held true. So I 
I switched over to handheld and tried to put that through its paces. Now obviously the footage I've got here is from internal locations in Crisis 2 and generally you're going to expect better performance and I can see a few emissions in terms of lighting effects to keep that performance consistent but I think you'd probably agree with me when I say this looks incredible. You can clearly see it's maintaining that 30 FPS target and certainly in this area we were looking at 720p. Textures remain crisp, that gyroscopic aiming translated well into handheld and as far as ports go this is right up there. Now when we go and look at the sound quality this has also been handled well. That's not always the case when we have ports. Sometimes the sound is drastically reduced in quality, a la Dark Souls, and other times the number of sounds feels to have been reduced so that you lose a bit of that spatial audio. Everything here is translated well. With a set of headphones on, you can pick out the exact direction and location of enemy calls, and the fidelity is certainly of a high quality. As far as differences then to the other console versions, you can expect 60 FPS over on PlayStation 5 and Xbox or PC. The PC version supporting DLSS as well as both software and hardware ray tracing which is applied to the entire trilogy but as far as sacrifices go there really aren't many on the switch version it feels super crispy in both docked and handheld with all the lighting shadows materials and textures carried over so well it almost feels like a planned showcase for the OLED screen as well because on that small display with those vibrant blacks and contrasts it absolutely pops the dev team also plan to support the game with further patches so obviously when when games are released some issues will arise but they won't be just leaving it alone. Crisis 2 Remaster is going to take up 10.3 gigs of internal space on your Nintendo Switch. Remember that not only can you buy it on its own but you can also pick it up as the full trilogy pack for £44.99 or your regional equivalent which it has to be said is a little bit less than I was expecting. I was expecting £49.99 here in the UK so that's nice to see. As far as thoughts on Crisis 2 well for me it was an improvement over the original mainly based Based on how the different systems of the nano suit operated the ability to individually activate certain elements of it rather than having it automatic really helps I loved the environments as well and as you could probably tell from the footage I really enjoy playing stealthily in these types of games well that is until it all goes hideously wrong but a small touch of John Rambo is okay do keep your eyes out for our full trilogy review but the next video going up is going to look at the performance of crisis 3 make sure you hit the link it will probably be in the top pin comment by the time you watch this but if it isn't make sure you're notified and you have your little bells and whistles switched on so that you get our next video a massive thanks to the developer one for actually putting their faith in switch up as we're not a gigantic company or anything like that and two for taking the time to properly optimize your game and having the confidence to let a channel go through that performance piece by piece with the potential there for it well not turning out quite right but you obviously knew you've done a good thing a massive thanks to all of you who enjoy the channel to our patrons who support us each month you're incredible and as always for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see ya